So navigating the pandemic, I mean, has been tough for most people, but it's hit the LGBTQ plus community especially hard. A report by Outright International explores some of the many, many issues that the queer community faces, from disruption in healthcare to an increased risk of violence. Vong, how has the coronavirus affected you and the ones that you love? Well, you know, I think a lot of queer people have been disowned by their family and they have a lack of traditional support system. So there's no backup plan. Like when we run out of money, we can't just go back and move in with our parents. Like this pandemic really kind of shines a light on that income inequality for LGBTQ workers. Like um, a huge portion of my social circle is comprised of performing artists. And our livelihood is dependent on performing lives. So mm -hmm. our income has been like drastically cut. And even bef even like beyond stage performers, the queer community in general has higher levels of informal work without steady pay or benefits, all of which have been like eradicated during the quarantine. And I would say like the most heartbreaking um, of all these cases are like people who've lost loved ones during the pandemic because um, a lot of family members aren't able to comfort their loved ones in the moments before their death. And this like recalls similar occurrences um, that happened during the AIDS pandemic where partners were blocked from seeing their loved ones and locked out of funeral services. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like um, um, especially scarring to have to relive that type of trauma. Sherry, what about you? Uh, certainly. Well, we know that uh, LGBTQ2 plus youth are at a higher risk of suicide. They almost always have been and still are also at a higher risk of homelessness. So that's also a problem and an increased problem under COVID. Uh, healthcare and just access to healthcare. Certainly, um, I did a lot of the work uh, with the trans community. I mean, sex reassignment surgery, lots of, 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 of counseling, all on hold, all difficult to access, which actually is in contravention of our Ontario Human Rights Code now um, because of Toby's law, but also isolation, depression. I mean, all of these are felt more strongly among precarious communities. And, you know, queer folk are a precarious community. Um, I just uh, was uh, involved in a commemoration service for a young trans woman who committed suicide, a sex trade worker. and. Uh, Again, uh, very vulnerable on the street, uh, much more vulnerable now under COVID. Kali, how about yourself? How are you and, and your loved ones taking care right now? Well, staying connected and doing more frequent check-ins uh, or making more efforts to stay connected and to make sure um, that we are doing well What this this era and this experience really highlighted for me, uh, for myself personally, with somebody uh, as somebody with depression, is how important mental health care is, and to uh, to be more vocal about mental health. And from what I'm hearing online, listening to stories, a lot of um, people in our communities, trans people, two spirit people, um, queer people, are at more of a risk for. Uh, mental health struggles, but because we are so isolated and disconnected in this in this time, it really highlights how important it is to to check in with each other, to make sure people are doing well, and to um, work on our own um, self care and doing what we can to make sure that we are keeping as mentally healthy and spiritually healthy as we can. Mm -hmm.